Hey friends, it's Mr. Jim, and welcome back to Kid Short Stories. Did you know that I built an Alexa skill for you to listen to our stories a lot easier? If you have an Alexa device and you want to be able to listen to Kid Short Stories or Kids Animal Stories really easily, have your parents go down to the show notes, and there's a link there for the Alexa skill for all the Mr. Jim podcasts. And so you have to enable that skill, and then you just say, Alexa, open Kid Short Stories, and then it will play today's story. Are you guys ready for part two of today's adventure? Me too, let's go! As Monty and Kai were hiding underneath the tree, trying to figure out uh, two very big things. One, how to not be seen by the purple blip that was flying in the sky above them, and two... How in the world to get the stinky crystal outside of the hippopotamus that it had accidentally swallowed it? Why does he have to swallow the crystal? Oh, well, let's find out what happens. As Monty and Kai looked at each other, they realized that they had to act quickly and fast. All right, I think if we're going to be able to do what we, I think we need to do with the doo-doo, we need to get that hippo to eat a lot of food, said Kai. Do you know, like, what hippos like to eat? Monty pulled out his spy manual and turned over to the page of hippopotamuses and, uh, looks like they like to eat grass and watermelons? Did you say watermelons? Said Kai. Yeah, it says right here that, like, one of their favorite things is watermelons, said Monty. Let's see if Spiology Squad can send us something to help us with all these watermelons because I think we're going to need a lot of them. Biology Squad, this is Monty and Kai. We need you to send us like a lot of watermelons. Shh. Did you say watermelons? Said Ava. Shh. Yes, it's kind of a long story and hard to explain, but basically we have a hippopotamus that has something in its belly that we need, and we so we need the hippopotamus to eat a lot, so then he will, you know, go to the bathroom, and then we will be able to rescue the thing that's missing, but we just need a whole bunch of watermelons. Uh, can you send us some? Shh. Well, since watermelons are really heavy, uh, we're going to need to dehydrate them, said Ava. I'll have Jaden send you some on the drone, uh, probably a dozen, that are dehydrated watermelons. And then you just need to pour a little bit of water on them, and then they will grow into real-sized watermelons. We'll get right on it as soon as possible. Over and out. Shh. While Monty was on the walkie-talkie with Spiology Squad... Kai was using his binoculars to keep an eye on that purple blimp in the sky. Have you ever seen the purple blimp before in the sky? They are always flying around, either looking for very, very stinky things or just, you know, trying to steal stuff. So if you smell something stinky or you see the purple blimp, you've got to let us know. So down in the show notes below... Find that texting number and you can text HQ uh, if you see or smell something super stinky. But just don't let that number fall into the hands of the purple ninjas because they'll give it to Dr. Stinky Breath. And then we'll be in big trouble. Holy smokes. Monty, look at this. Kai handed Monty the binoculars that he was using to look at the purple blimp and pointed and... Oh, no. Are those purple ninjas wearing scuba suits? Said Monty. Yeah. It looks like they're about to jump into the lake and start looking for the hippopotamus in their scuba suits. Oy, that sounds dangerous. Those hippopotamuses can be pretty grumpy if you come in on their territory, said Monty. And it was just then that the drone from Spiology Squad arrived and it had a little basket on it. Wait, what's inside there? Said Kai. They're sending us uh, some watermelons. Wait, these are not watermelons. They're super small, said Monty. He was holding up about a dozen. It looked like golf balls. Uh, Do you know what a golf ball is? That's how big these watermelons were. They were a little confused. But there was a note there that said, just add water. Huh, that's strange, said Kai. He picked one up and brought it over to the lake and just dipped it into the water and instantly, whoa, we turned into a ginormous, delicious-looking watermelon. How did they do that? Said Monty. I don't know, but it's genius. 
All right, we got to start getting these uh, watermelons back to their normal size fast, said Kai. They started throwing the watermelons into the water and they were instantly poof. They expanded into a ginormous watermelon. It looked very delicious. Okay, let's put these in this grass field over here and hopefully the that hippo will come out and eat the watermelons, said Monty. Kai and Monty both grabbed as many watermelons as they could, but it was only one at a time. <laughs> they had to make a lot of trips back and forth from the lake to from where the watermelons grew from their golf ball seed into uh, the field that they needed to be in. And pretty soon, the trap was set. Well, it wasn't really a trap. It was more just a really delicious looking snack for that hippo. And it didn't take long before that hippopotamus came <laughs> sniffing up out of the water. Kai, we got to get out of here. That hippo looks hungry and we don't want to get in the way of him and his watermelon, said Monty. Monty and Kai grabbed all their stuff and climbed up a tree. You should have seen it. That hippopotamus just started eating and swallowing the whole watermelons just like in one bite. His mouth was ginormous. It was pretty impressive. There's no way I could do that. But that hippo blazed through all the watermelons very quickly. And all of a sudden, they heard a rumble in his tummy. Monty, did you hear that? said Kai. Of course I did. That was the loudest tummy rumble I've ever heard, said Monty. And then all of a sudden, the hippopotamus did what he needed to do, if you know what I mean. And it smelled terrible. Monty and Kai couldn't believe it. That was a big pile of stuff that they needed to find. Well, hopefully the stinky crystal was in there. And just then, a purple ninja's head popped up out of the water. Remember, he was in a scuba suit. And the hippopotamus turned around and saw him. <clears throat> the hippo did not like seeing somebody else in his territory and took off charging towards the purple ninja. Ah, somebody get me out of here! The purple ninja took off swimming as fast as he could being chased by that hippo. The purple ninja grabbed onto a rope, rope that pulled him out of the water and back into the purple blimp. All right. Ugh. As much as I don't like saying this, but I think it's time we get to work, said Kai. Hand me some gloves. Monty put on some gloves and handed Kai a pair as well. They needed to start digging through what that hippopotamus left behind. Thankfully, it didn't take much longer, and they found the stinky crystal. It was very stinky, and it made it even more stinkier that it was in all that stuff from the hippopotamus. Ugh. They cleaned it off in the lake and put it in a bag and sealed it up, put it in their backpack, and off they blasted back to HQ to deliver the stinky crystal. Up on the blimp lab, Dr. Stinky Breath was not very happy. Purple ninjas, why are you so scared of a hippopotamus? He's so fat and slow. They're not slow, boss, I promise. He tried to eat me. He was so fast in the water. I don't care. All I care is we don't have stinky crystal. And it looks like it's gone now. It's not on our map. The radar with that red blinking thing is gone. And it's all your fault, purple ninjas. Ah! Great job, Monty and Kai. You guys saved the day and got that stinky crystal out of a hippopotamus's tummy. I'm so glad that it wasn't me doing that job. <laughs> and I'm so glad that you two were brave enough to accomplish the mission. We are all very thankful for you. The end. Great job, you listened all the way to the end, and you know what time it is. It's time for Kid Shoutouts. I want to say hey to Susan from New Jersey, Finn and Jack from South Africa, Alexandra from California, Lucy from Connecticut, Theo and Nevi from South Carolina, Liliana, 
Addison and Olivia from San Diego, Henry and Thomas from Wisconsin, Cameron from Cincinnati. I'm so glad that you're all in the Kid Short Stories family. And on the spy team, we could not stop Dr. Stinky Breath and his crew without you, my friends. Well, you have a super duper day, and I will see you next time. Bye!